Hi there, welcome to Fresh Feast with Dr. Paul, where healthy eating means delicious food cooked at home from fresh ingredients. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and today we are making my famous pizza. And by famous pizza, I mean anybody who's ever had it at my house or at their house, because I can take it on the road with me, has requested it again and again. And I'm going to show you how to make restaurant quality pizza that will rival any pizza that you've had in Italy, and I've had plenty of pizzas in Italy, and you'll be able to make it right in your own kitchen with my one secret, which is the pizza stone. The pizza stone is put in the oven, and it is at temperature right now at 550, and I've had it in there for 40 minutes. And you need it heating at least that long so that it gets to temperature and crisps up your crust. And that is the big secret to having a nice crispy crust. I like thin crust, but you can always make thick crusts. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. For the pizza crust, here are the ingredients. You need bread flour and you don't want to be using anything other than that because the crust won't be as thick. It will work, but you want that crunchy crispness that the bread flour gives. It crisps up the, uh, the dough and it makes it taste a whole lot better. A little bit of sugar, some olive oil, salt, and some warm water. So let's get right to it and start making the crust. I'll grab a big basin here and we're going to use three and a half cups of the flour. I like the crust to be kind of sticky. It just seems to work better that way. And I know a lot of people will criticize that pizza is not that healthy. And what I think is pizza makes everybody happy. And I think anything that you eat when you're happy is going to make your body healthier. Think about when you eat when you're stressed and what your gut feels like. It doesn't matter how good the food you're eating is. If you're stressed out, your body's not processing food well. So one of the big factors I've learned over time is that healthy eating means feeling really good about what you're eating. So I put three and a half cups of flour in there. We're going to put a teaspoon of sugar. It just helps the yeast to, to rise nicely. Two teaspoons of the salt. This is coarse salt. You can use kosher salt. I just happen to have this gray salt on hand and it's a healthy salt because it's very unrefined. It's sea salt. It's a little bit gray, hence the name, and kind of moist. And it has a nice taste as well. The yeast, you just need a packet of it. If you have a bottle, it's two and a quarter teaspoons. This is the instant yeast, quick rise. And for the water, you need a cup and a half of water. You want warm water, pretty warm. I just get it out of the tap hot. So let's just run that for a bit. Make sure the water is getting hot. And I'll just mix up the dry ingredients here. And you're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil to this. So let's just get that. There we go. And this should be nice and hot. Yes, it is. Get a cup and a half in here. Good. Pour that right in. A lot of the recipes call for a stand mixer. I've found you don't really need it. Maybe it makes it a minute faster. If you just make it in this bowl, a big bowl, and you stir it by hand, it'll start to clump together. And then you can knead it right in the bowl because this isn't a type of dough that needs a whole lot of working and it will, 
it'll work out just fine without a mixer. I do like using my KitchenAid mixer just because I have to justify the purchase of it, but you have one less thing to wash up if you just use a bowl. So once the dough starts to clump together, just get it off the spoon here. And we'll work it by hand for a bit. Just to get the flour all mixed in and you'll get a sticky ball that starts to form. Get as much of the dough off the sides of the bowl so there's less cleanup. And it's now nicely mixed together and I have this nice ball of dough. That's your pizza dough. So it's that easy to get a ball of pizza dough and you don't have to go buy it at the store. And trust me, when you make it yourself, it tastes a lot better. And like I said, if you make things at home, put your energy and love into them, it's so much healthier. Now we need this to rise and it needs to sit for an hour. So I grab another bowl here and the recipe calls for two teaspoons of olive oil. What you wanna do is just coat the bowl. So what I use is my little olive oil sprayer. It's just a, you pour oil, oil into it, pump it up and you can spray olive oil. So I spray it all around the bowl here and it just makes sure that the pizza crust isn't, or the dough isn't sticking to the bowl while it's rising. That should be good. So if you just took two teaspoons of olive oil and put it in there and swirled it around and rubbed it on the sides, you'd be good. Then I take my dough ball and I roll it around to get it coated with olive oil. There we have it. Let me just get some of this off my hands. And I'll grab some plastic wrap. You could use a damp towel just to cover it. And you just want to leave it to sit at room temperature or somewhere a little bit warm. Warm, like if room temperature isn't too warm for you, maybe put it in the oven with the light on and let it sit for an hour. I have some dough that has been rising for an hour. It's right here. And what we're going to do is punch it down. I'll get some flour because it's a little sticky. Sprinkle a little flour on top. And the fun part is you get to give it a punch. And that just gets the dough ready. I'm going to cut it into four parts to make four pizzas. I took a recipe that was for two crusts and I've turned it into four because I like thin crusts. So we get four balls of dough put them back into the bowl here and we're going to let them rest for another 10 minutes. There they are. Cover them up so they don't dry out and we'll be ready to rock in 10 minutes. The dough has been resting for 10 minutes and now it's ready to work. I had cut it into four pieces and I'm going to grab a ball of dough here. Keep the rest of the dough that you're not working with covered. Get that out of the way. And it's pretty sticky, so you want a lot of flour on the surface. And we're going to roll it out into an oblong kind of shape. I have a rectangular pizza stone, so I tend to make kind of rectangular-ish pizzas. But I like the artistic, obscure shapes. So you get these different kind of artistic pizzas that look like different continents and things and no two are alike. Now, the flour that you use makes a big difference. Using bread flour causes the crust to become more crispy and crusty. And the other thing that you can do if you're really concerned about the flour you're using is get some organic flour. They do carry or a big bag of organic flour at Costco that's not a whole lot more costly if you're buying it in bulk than getting regular flour at the grocery store. The other thing is 
I've had uh, plenty of pizzas in Italy and the flour they use in Europe tends to not be as glutinous, but also they don't use the pesticides that they use here. And people often say that when they eat pasta and breads and pizza in Italy, it doesn't seem to affect them the same way or react with their gut as much. So I've rolled this pizza crust out really thin. It's probably two or three millimeters thick. That's how you want it. And I transfer it to a piece of parchment paper. Everything that I cook on my pizza stone, I use parchment on. Some pizza stones, it doesn't matter if you get oil on them, but the one that I have, because I think it can go to such high temperatures, you don't want to get it saturated with oil. So to transfer this, I just make sure it's not stuck to the counter. The dough is very, very resilient. It's, uh, it's stretchy, so you want it kind of stretched out. So it's good that it's stuck to the counter for a little bit so that it maintains its shape. And you just move it over onto the parchment paper here and just get it rearranged into the position. There we go. And now you need your pizza peel. What I use for a pizza peel is just a cookie sheet that has no edges. And you can use the back of a cookie sheet if you don't have one. Because my pizza is oblong and large, I, I like something that's big. I have it right here. See, pizza, it's peel, no edges on my cookie sheet, and I can slide it right under. And I use this to move the pizza crust in and out of the oven. So I already have a couple here ready to go. Let's get the toppings ready. Of course we need cheese and I use any kind of cheese, but I, any brand, but I like to have some mozzarella and some extra old cheddar. I like the combination because it just adds more flavor. For one pizza, you probably want about 200 grams of cheese and more or less to taste. So I'll just cut off the amount we're going to use. And we'll get it grated. And don't use the pre-grated cheese if you want a really good pizza because there's all sorts of preservatives. Like they put, um, they put powder on it so that it doesn't stick together and you'll just end up not being as happy with the result. If you use your own grated cheese, it will be a lot better result. So get the cheese grated. I have a food processor that I use for grating large amounts of cheese. So I would have just grated the whole block of each one. And then you mix the extra old cheddar and the mozzarella together. And it just makes a nice flavor combination. And it has that gooiness that you really want from your pizza cheese. Now there's a whole variety of types of toppings you can use on your pizza today, just because we want to get this video done and show you how to get those crusts really made properly in the oven. I'm just going to do a simple one. So it'll just be sauce with the cheese and pepperoni on top. You know what? It just is so simple, but it is a favorite, especially for the kids and for people that are big grown up kids. And what I use for the pepperoni is the pepperoni sticks. I cut it up myself again and you can use any kind of uh, dried meats uh, and cut them up, slice them thin, and just make sure you're generous with the toppings. So I'm going to mix up the cheese here. So we've got the two kinds mixed together and let's just move it out of the way. And we're ready to go. So we'll cut up some, we'll cut up some pepperoni. I just got some pepperettes. They're the Schneider's pepperettes. I freeze the ones that I don't use. Crack it open. The crust should be almost done. That timer is going to go off. Got three there. Grab my pizza peel and back to the oven. Now, 
because of the parchment paper, I can grab this pizza right out of the oven by grabbing the parchment paper. And what you see here is we've got a really nice bubbly crust. It's been in there for three minutes, so it's not browned, it's not crisped. You don't have to worry about that because you're going to put it back in. So let's just put it on the side here. I'll take the opportunity to slip another one in. Set the timer. And we'll get back to the toppings. So let's cut up our pepperoni here. Cut them all together. And get make sure you have a lot because it tastes good with lots of pepperoni on top. There we go. Move that into a bowl. And lastly, we need sauce. This sauce is my Instant Pot marinara sauce that I have made in another video for you. So make sure you check our YouTube channel for how to make this sauce. Again, if you use this sauce, you're going to have a really nice flavor of basil and the richness of the tomatoes that this is made of from the garlic and the onions. So you'll have a really nice flavor profile on your pizza. And if you want to make it simpler and get some pre-made sauce, you're just going to lose out on the quality. Grab the crust that we already have ready here. Push down all the bubbles. Be careful if it just came out of the oven because that air inside will be hot. Grab my spoon and just be generous with your sauce. Get it all right to the edges. Spread it all over the pizza here. And for me, it really is this marinara sauce that makes it for me. Uh, the flavor is just cannot be matched by, by regular pizza sauce. You're going to want to use another piece of parchment just because this one has, as you can see, gotten browned and you really don't need any of that going up in flames in your oven because it is at such a high temperature. And we've got another pizza crust that'll be ready in just about a minute. So the oven will be free and ready for this crust. The pepperoni is going to go on top of the cheese so that the heat can really get the fat in the pepperoni to, to kind of um, bubble up and, and it gets the pepperoni kind of crisp. Make sure you get the cheese right to the edges of the pizza because every part wants cheese and that cheesiness is what makes everybody love pizza and brings all that happiness to to people as they eat it and as i said before anything that makes you feel good when you're eating it and if you eat it with the right attitude and you don't feel bad about it how can it be bad for you so we've got this pizza ready to go into the oven right here oops it's going to need the toppings. Let's get this other crust. Beautiful. Just be careful. That stone is really hot. You don't need any burns. That ruins pizza night for sure. Get the pepperonis on. Again, make sure every part gets a nice covering. And just depending on how crispy or how much browning you like, that will determine the amount of time that the pizza goes in the oven for. Usually, for me, it takes between five and seven minutes. If you have a convection oven, it's going to be shorter. And you just have to watch them because they can burn. And even bad pizza is good pizza, but you just don't need anything blackened. There we go. And it's ready to go in the oven. Right, another piece of parchment. There we go. Just transfer it over to this fresh piece. 
and I'll use my pizza peel or this cookie sheet and we'll pop this in the oven right to the back of the stone and we'll set the timer for five minutes and check it. And there you have it. The pizza's in the oven and we just have to wait that five minutes before we can dig in. The pizza's been in the oven for five minutes and it's looking fantastic. I'm gonna grab it. Slide the pizza peel under the parchment and just grab it there. Wow. Nice browning of the cheese right on top. And you can see how the pepperoni's gotten nicely crisped. It's just perfect and ready to go. And if you want to let it rest just a little bit, you can put it onto a rack just so that the pizza crust doesn't get any, um, doesn't get moist and softer. And we're ready to cut this baby up and enjoy it. So let me get this out of the way. And I have a fancy pizza cutter. We take our pizza seriously in this house. I bought this, uh, I just ordered it on Amazon again. It's a Chicago brick oven pizza cutter. It just looked, looked really nice and was a tool I couldn't pass up. I'll just cut it right on here. And all you do is roll that knife right through it. There we go. Restaurant quality pizza, just ready to go. Crispy, tasty. There you have it. Thanks for watching. You've been watching Fresh Feasts with Dr. Paul. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more videos.